welcome from uh, uh, People's Health uh, Organization and CNS. Together we are here as part of the NTB Dialogues and we, we are here of, of course from the 15th Union World Health Conference on Lung Health. This is the last year of the conference and we really have humanities with us, uh, Dr. Kinada, Dr. Puri, Dr. Manhari and Dr. Chandra with us. Uh, we have many journalists online from across the world and also we have members here from APCAT Media. This is an Asia Pacific network of media working for tobacco control, DB control and prevention of NCDs. And it was recently <coughs> launched uh, at the APCAT Third Summit in Bobo, Indonesia. So uh, we have online with us there. Uh, Mr. Padamra Joshi from Nepal is there. Can he can you hear me? Padamra Ji, can you hear me? Yes, can yes, yes, ma'am. And we have Dr. Thieu from Myanmar. And we already have some questions uh, from the journalists. So one of the questions I just read out because she had posted it to me and she is a, a former editor of Jakarta Post, Rita Vidya Dana. She is in the middle of a meeting, so she said she might not come online. Brief comments might be good. Yes, so yes. To help them so, yes. So first we have brief comments from first is uh, Dr. Rita uh, thank you very much, uh, This is a important session at the end of the Union Conference, which is being held for the first time in India. And uh, uh, the conference is focusing, uh, of course, on lung diseases and tuberculosis in a big way, but this time also on tobacco related problems and HIV. So, HIV, TB, uh, twin epidemics, uh, they are also being focused here. Uh, here, uh, we are sitting in Bhutabha which is the capital of Telangana. And Telangana is a high, which is a high TB prevalent state in the country. In the uh, four five states which are very high, uh, HIV and TB, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and some uh, states in the Northeast. And uh, here we are uh, trying to have some kind of common strategy. Uh, on uh, my left side is uh, the good director general of National AIDS Control Organization. Uh, our vice president of the AIDS Society of India, Dr. Pate Mathai, who is the dean of the Apollo Hospital, is there. And Dr. Noval Chandra is at the Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences in Hyderabad. All of us are uh, of one opinion that whether we fight HIV or tuberculosis or tobacco problem, this cannot be fought singularly, it cannot be fought only by government or only by government. It has to be done together uh, in consonance with each other and involving uh, people through mass movement. Whether that mass movement through, should be through very big meetings or a small meeting or through social media, the mass mobilization. Because all this worrying uh, tuberculosis where people can get tuberculosis without any intention of having uh, any infection to get. But HIV and tobacco. They are depending on their personal uh, habits, and uh, that needs to be controlled or that needs to be monitored. So I think we are going to do that effort through this uh, webcast, and uh, I would be happy if uh, we have comments from uh, media from the other side. What we should be doing is something wrong or doing something rectified, and aside uh, from our colleagues. Uh, from both the government as well as the private sector. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Hitchin Puri, National AIDS Network Program, Deputy Director General. Uh, I'm really glad to know the opinion of uh, Dr. Tilada regarding the, uh, the association of TB and HIV. We, uh, TB and HIV is the, the, I mean, TB is the most common opportunistic infection of uh, HIV. So, uh, we in India, both the programs are working in close coordination and we are having common uh, meetings, common at the, the uh, peripheral level, at the state level, at the uh, state, uh, central level as well. And we are also having the common uh, the central level regional review and 
uh, in the in those meetings we are finding out if uh, the we are going in the right direction or not and if something uh, we can if some changes or some uh, corrective action we can take we we take we, we take decision there and then and uh, both the programs are uh, going whenever we are visiting together we are finding the uh, monetary uh, problem in the or deficiencies and we are rectifying there and then and whenever we are even visiting alone even even in uh, during those visits we are finding out the deficiencies of each other's program and we are bringing it to each other knowledge and this is how the wherever the association is not complete we are making it complete as a result of that we have been able to find out more number of pbhiv cases earlier we could uh, diagnose only 50% in 2017 but 2018 we we improved it to 2059% uh, these are the common effort of both the programs now the our tb uh, colleagues they have done really well in uh, uh, bringing the private set uh, private providers and uh, the private providers are helping the pro uh, tv program and not only they are helping the tv program they are also helping the tv as, uh, as associated tv and hiv uh, uh, clients so this is how we are and we need to leverage we are thinking that we will leverage on that and we are also expanding with through our ngos so uh, that's all i want to say about <coughs> that and i am happy to be here and uh, i'll be happy to answer any question if somebody uh, from other end wants to ask thank you and now it is over to dr mathai uh, vice president of uh, uh, is controlled society of india thank you and good afternoon to all of you i am the dean of the medical college in india we do not we do not we have not fully utilized the competence of the medical college in the field of care of patients for hiv as well as tb there are over nearly 500 medical colleges it's each one of these medical colleges have a department of tb most of the government medical colleges have an arpc none of the private medical colleges are uh, have a have an arpc center recently nacos and medical council of india has requested naco and naco has kindly provided arpc centers to these medical colleges it is important to understand the value of this because mainstream mbbs graduates either two have not had no experience with the care of, of care and treatment of hiv infected uh, patients and they have no they have no experience with pediatric hiv and they have no experience with prevention any of the preventive efforts that the government is doing it is essential that these mbbs graduates and post graduates who are now required to work in rural india should have an should have this knowledge to work in the primary health care centers and advise people in the primary health care centers as well most of these most of our patients mean we now are equally distributed in the urban and in the rural areas somebody has to provide care for them so training at medical colleges before they graduate out would make it would certainly help improve the care and treatment of hiv infected patients as well as perhaps they should also would they would also involve in preventive efforts having said this these doctors are going to be the linkages with the community with link linkages to the civil civil society and 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 in um, and in these areas once they interact with the civil society they will be able to impact better on the care of the hiv infected patients and the government programs can really percolate down to the last mile you know the ones these people are also involved secondly uh, it is to be we have made several mistakes in the past and these mistakes are not to be repeated 
they were, they were the largest buildup of antimicrobial resistances among bacteria. It is only a matter of time when you will see it with fungus, when you will see it with the uh, um, and the virus, and we are already beginning to see it with tuberculosis. And if unless they understand the scientific basis of the use of these so-called antimicrobial agents or chemicals, we are going to have a disaster. To explain. We have 32 drugs, 32 different drug combinations in TB. We have 25 different drugs available in HIV. People are using permutation combination of all these um, uh, drugs. Triple therapy is well known to, is very effective, well known. People are more moving to dual therapy. Some people inadvertently bring into monotherapy still. All these have to change, otherwise we will be faced with another catastrophe, which is drug-resistant mutations. Drug-resistant mutations, whether it is in TB or in HIV, once it is transmitted, you need, uh, you know, very toxic and perhaps, uh, you know, a combination of drugs which will result in in, uh, in uh, tissue injury as well. Thirdly, the, the last point that I want to mention is in TB, mainly with the lungs, perhaps extrapulmonary TB with you know, other organ systems. The HIV infected person has put several comorbidities as they begin to live longer. We define comorbidities as illnesses which are not associated with its defining illness. So these, these so, the so-called comorbidities like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, it's not an AIDS defining illness. But they are going to take its toll on the HIV infected. Patients who are living longer with problems with the, um, with the kidney, cardiomyopathy, with accelerated atherosclerosis, with dementia, and you will have, as you heard about, you can, they continue to smoke or continue to drink alcohol. They would have hepatotoxicity as well as lung toxicity and lung health would be impaired. These would be the next major Next major levels of care that we will have to ascend to, to in order to mitigate deaths as well as improve the quality of life of these patients, either with HIV or with TB or those who are infected, all of them have the basic properties. I now hand you over to Dr. Neville, who is also a professor of medicine at the Arms Institute of Medicine. Good morning. I think uh, we've all heard from the experts for you know, various um, uh, fantastic inputs. Probably I, so I represent uh, the Nizam Center for Medical Sciences, which is for all kinds of reasons. It's an autonomous body and so a private body. So um, I think the need of the art is a private and public partnership. Uh, similar or likewise to what we have done with HIV over uh, the last few years, where we have so many patients now enrolled under the uh, ARP program through these partnerships. I think it's similar, the need of the R for TB patients is likewise. Uh, at our institute, we have people, thanks to the RMPC programs, we have people at our institute where we do uh, register each and every of our patients who is found to have either extra partner or some form of tuberculosis with that person. And so, uh, probably that's where we need to head as long as uh, you know, uh, to pull in so much of data and then uh, we can work together. Say something. Dr. Tara Singh Bam, Deputy Regional Director, Asia Pacific International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, is also with us. And Dr. Tara Singh Bam is a big force in, uh, especially in engaging local level leaders, mayors, member of parliaments, other corporate leaders to uh, to make change on tobacco control, to push for tobacco control, push for non communicable diseases or uh, uh, prevention policies, as well as ending tuberculosis at the local level. Amazing responses across the region. So, Doc, and uh, one of the he's one of the spirits behind the formation of Asia Pacific Cities Alliance for Tobacco Control and Prevention of NCDs, which is an alliance uh, founded by several ministries of health in uh, South Asia Pacific. 
uh, and uh, also by, led by two mayors, mayors of uh, Bhopal in Indonesia and mayor of Maranatha city in Indonesia. Dr. Tarasi. Just, Just a brief comment. Before you oh, uh, thank you, Bobby and Shubha, for organizing this wonderful the event with the expert. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not late. Well, the, uh, what I have seen uh, we need actually the science was there before I joined the public. And science now is there. Also, science will remain. What is the need to transfer the evidence of science that this happens in the How can we make it happen? I think that's the only thing, only one way we will take all the partners, all the stakeholders, including the families and the friends of the common So, the, with this, uh, the, uh, on, by Understanding uh, 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 putting the more uh, the force in this area, we uh, as a government so we have established uh, Asia Pacific Cities Alliance for Tobacco Control Uh And this alliance, the main objective of this alliance is to find out the local sources, local resources, local practices, local better so, in summary, I'd like to say the, the local leaders, we, uh, we need to take them to account to their people. So, they are mayors or the city, they are the head or the city head or the government. So, they can be a bigger role. Uh, and uh, then they, they can also uh, identify. I learned a lot of things from my peers, from my friends, then from my crew. So similar, when the mayors talk to their friends, their their political side, people listen to them, then us. So that's why we. have a lot many questions pouring in and the first question is for is for Dr. Tara Singh Bao. Uh, it is from Indonesia. Uh, Rita Vidya Rana, who is a former editor of Jakarta Post and she says that you have been working, you have worked, done wonderful work for on tobacco control in Indonesia. Uh, we still have 60 million active smokers there and uh, as, as you know, smoking is the leading cause of tuberculosis and also responsible for so many other NCDs. How can Indonesia change this car smoking habit? More so given it comprises of 17,000 islands and uh, there are conflict, conflicting uh, interests also uh, with the tobacco industry, charging the government policies. So what is the way forward? I think this is uh, really... Uh, very complicated and very simple question for me. Uh, thank you for, uh, for your input on tobacco smoking in Indonesia. Yes, I agree. Uh, it is a big challenge. There are more than 60 million uh, smokers in Indonesia, and more than 100 million of people are uh, exposed to second, second hand smoke every day. Uh, and about 43 million of Indonesian children they do a lot of secondary every day. So this is really a uh, challenge. Um, if, if I translate this challenge into a different way, I would say this is also a So by 
saying this in our personal yes, yes, I, I, I want to see that zero but uh, it's really convincing to the, to the local leaders, to the, the, the ministries, so that they, they can make a strong action. Uh, of course, they are, uh, yeah, in tobacco control, they always we work at the, the, at the policy at the policy level uh, to have the, the better impact, the, the larger impact at the population level. So those strategies needs to be uh, implemented in Indonesia. For example, the tax on tobacco products, or the price should be increased uh, so that they cannot be affordable. And uh, uh, smoking, uh, uh, smoking should be banned in all public places, both places. Uh, they are, uh, still, uh, they are, uh, sorry to say, Indonesia is only one country in the region uh, in the history that you are still advertised for tobacco uh, by, the, by, uh, by media. So, uh, the all types of advertising promotional activities should be banned. Uh, and uh, there is an, another place that I think the strategy large and traffic and one on tobacco tax. So Indonesia is the same. So the government should focus on the larger traffic and one for the 90 percent like other countries going in the region. Uh, uh, I would also uh, think that is all the, the population level strategy needs to be implemented. So then it doesn't matter whether we have the, uh, the uh, 70,000 islands or the, the, it's, uh, it's, it's not about the developing. It's about all about the policy. Uh, we have a question for Dr. Matai uh, from India, and uh, the listener is uh, thanking uh, you for bringing the antimicrobial resistance part in focus and says that uh, many countries in the Asia Pacific uh, region. Uh, over this the counter sale of drugs is very common and is it adding to is it a very important component uh, of uh, that uh, increasing rise in uh, and, uh, and AMR antimicrobial resistance is uh, you're referring to a move with the bacteria uh, India has got the highest level of resistance to common organism causing common infections. To state it very briefly, among in skin infection, you've got this methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus, causing skin infections and abscesses. Then you've got this gram negative organism, the most dreaded of them being the carbapenem resistant carbapenem is producing cell and pneumonia. We've got a large number of PS BLs, got a large number of metal and you've also got multi drug resistance in these gram negatives, which is resulting in in very few antibiotics that are effective against these organisms. Having said so, there are several strains which are pan drug resistant to most available antibiotic microbials in this country. I'm also with the Global Asia Pacific Global Substance Alliance, uh, which is headquarters in uh, Bangkok and uh, Australia. Yes. Problem in the countries of such as us, call it, call it uh, tropical, uh, this is tropical uh, countries, call it uh, low or medium income countries. What is happening is the very poor infection control practices are existing. Number one. Number two, even though we all advocate hand hygiene as the first line of therapies, most hospitals are not equipped with facilities to practice hand hygiene as stated by the WHO. Secondly, very few have got the consumables to practice aseptic precautions before they do any procedure. I'm not talking about in the theater OT, but even when you do it in the ambulatory care setting. Thirdly, our environment is a reflection. Hospital environment is clean, we say. But please look at the environment outside the hospital. Sanitation is um, uh, needs a lot to be said about as well as hygiene. I am very glad that our Prime Minister is contributing 
significant amount of the GDP for Swachh Bharat. It will certainly help in the minimize in, minim, in minimizing the so-called vector borne diseases, which are causing havoc in our country, malaria, dengue, chicken and all the Japanese B and cephalitis, crab type, whatever it is. If you clean up the outside of the of our uh, hospital and show this in, the incidence of these diseases will come down so much so the treatment of acute undifferentiated fever is not it will also improve and uh, because you don't need antibacterial agents for these infections so answer to your question what really pushes the antimicrobial resistance cascade forward is the, is the amount of antibiotics that we use Partly for community acquired fevers, everybody gives an antibiotic, they make it a little bit of cough, you know, they give them an antibiotic. Today, national drug use, national use of antibiotics, we always suggest, okay, right drug, right dose, right duration, all that. There is an option called no use, there is no need to use any antibiotic. Okay, and today we have got 10 different conditions when no antibiotics are required. We have got instances where number of the duration of therapy, previously we used to give for 14 days, 10 days. Now we can give it for five days and seven days. We've got instances where we can de-escalate therapy. If we are not aware of this in our routine or a commonly occurring infection, translated to TB, translated to HIV, the same habit, the same practice, or if the discipline is not changed, we will cause havoc with multiple resistances among other organisms. Uh, we have a question from Nepal and a similar question from Myanmar saying that ending TB looks like to be a mission impossible in the Asia Pacific region. Where are we failing down the line? And do we need more synergies between TB control, HIV control, tobacco control programs to make this possible, to make ending TB possible? So I think we need comments from all our experts on this. And may I add diabetes as well? Diabetes day is coming on 14 November. See, uh, when we take history of a patient who comes to us either because of HIV or fear of HIV, we ask three questions. When did you first sip alcohol? And they say around 17 or 18. When did you first take tobacco? Around the same time. When did you have first sex in life? Around the same time. The analogy says that when a young person decides to cross the Lakshman Desha, we call it Lakshman Desha, they cross not only for one thing, they cross for multiple things. So, though the diseases are not interconnected per se, but the cause for the diseases are interconnected. We, uh, what are the ages for those things happening? The boy or girl who leaves the school and goes to college. That is the first uh, oh, that's what I cross. Second time, when they cross our 12th standard, become either a medical student or engineering student or MBA or CA, then they think that we are different than other students. And third time, when they graduate, they become intern, they get first salary, and how to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And all these things initially start by recovery, with some peer pressure, or that we are something different than others, and that becomes habit. So basically, if we really want to control all these things, we need to act before that 15, 16 of age. I remember the old days when we started HIV awareness program and sex education program. When we went to the schools asking that we should do sex education, they said, this should be done only in college. These are schools. What can you do in schools? So we said, you don't decide. Let the parent-teacher association decide, PTA decide. And we conducted a meeting of PTA and we asked at what age we should start sex education. Age 5, nobody has had. Age 6, maybe 1 or 2 percent has had. As the age was advancing, so around 11, 12, 13, a lot of hands were up. So I said, though, personally I feel, that sex education should start at the age of four or five when the child is starting to go out of home to prevent sex abuse, 
to understand something is a good touch or bad touch. But we cannot impose our thinking on somebody else. So what we said that if there is a consensus of starting sex education at 13, 14, start there. And then maybe after two years, we can go to 12 and 11. In any case, we do not have so much of machinery and trained people to conduct sex education for everybody, every child of all ages. They may not be comfortable. So let us start from that particular age. So similarly, there is no per, uh, perfect age of doing something. But if consensus says that doing college, at least doing college, then come to 10 standard or when they graduate from the 10. Unless or until you do that, then what we are doing is uh, like what is happening in Delhi. Today, the health emergency is declared. You allow the farmers to burn the uh, stub uh, ones, and then you say, we'll uh, have a lot of uh, fire engines to put in you know, fire extinguishers. We'll have masks and we'll have this and we'll have that. Why did you allow this to first burn? So same thing, preventing the changing behavior is more important than changing all these stuff. This is my opinion, but maybe some other panelists can have other opinion. Thank you. Uh, I do agree that uh, the early and onset age group is very important. We have to be, if we have to catch them early, and then we will be able to prevent the HIV AIDS. But uh, regarding the question, uh, it was asked, are we having any coordinated program between the TB, HIV, uh, uh, tobacco? Yes, we are having, definitely. TB and its comorbidity it are having its common, uh, at the common platform, we are meeting it, meeting in the, every, every quarter we are meeting. And TV and HIV are having very close association. And uh, as in my opening remarks also, I said that we are uh, uh, we are uh, doing the cross referral also. The person, uh, the client is coming to our setup. He is referred to the uh, referred for the confirmation of TV, and from the TV setup, they are referred for HIV uh, diagnosis. So. So this is how we are able to find out more and more number of the cases and also we, uh, during that uh, session we are also giving them uh, counseling also. And suppose he is having a high risk behavior, he can change, he has got the chance to change his behavior. Suppose he has not infected yet, he can change his behavior. If he has infected then we have to put him on treatment at the earliest. This is how we are doing it. And, uh, and for the T, uh, regarding TB, uh, my uh, colleague is not there, uh, but he will be telling you in a um, uh, better way. But uh, uh, on his behalf, I can say that definitely we are uh, TB comorbidities like uh, diabetes, tobacco and all the uh, comorbidities, including HIV, are being put out and uh, that is being, being taken care of by Government of India and we will take it further. Now I will uh, invite from my I'm not sure. Uh, there are several demerits of tobacco. I can't think of a merit for tobacco. They say that smoking is off the record. Even they say perhaps help prevent Parkinson's disease or ulcerative colitis. So there is no no other uh, you know setup. But having said this, more than the tobacco, it is the product of combustion that is most worrying. If you take tobacco, or even if you take just smoke in the form of a cigarette or in the form of household. Um, wood that is burning. This is what damages the lung. This is what damages the macrophage. Macrophage, which is the key to the protection of TB, gets lazy, gets sluggish, gets deranged, so as not to function effectively <coughs> when the TB bacilli enters. So smoking can predispose to, if, um, because normally when you, if, even if AFP enters, and if your macrophage function is good, 10% of, I mean, we can eliminate TB as well. 
But if you are a smoker and the macrophages are lazy or have been affected, then the chances of the macrophages eating up or digesting the mycobacterium tubercle bacilli is less. Having said this, it's the, 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 you look at, you know, I don't know what people teach. In the United States, they teach that TB is their bond. I teach that TB is droplet infection. That means droplet infection, I can't, even if I shout and even if I cough, it won't go more than five meters. Whereas airborne, I will get it in the buses, from the trains, and from the close crowded places. And you will get particularly, you know, and making this statement. What about mass gathering? The cricket match is a mass gathering. That everybody is shouting and, and uh, you know, from the, from the larynx, and you're vibrating out and sending air particles. What about the Kumbhamela? What about the, you know, various, uh, uh, you know, other pilgrimage sites that we go to? India lives very closely with, with, with her people. My household contacts, what <coughs> five people are there in my house? And then, what is the definition of Islam? <coughs> Pardon me. The definition of Islam is when people live in under one roof, five people of book, I think number is four people, live under one roof. We call it as Islam dwelling. Because they do not have any in a single room. Now, household contact. Look at the number of air transmissions that can occur. Look at the number of droplet transmissions that can occur. So, I am not saying that TV, certainly poverty is enhancing TV. And I think she has a slide this morning that TV, poverty, TV, and you know, the circle continues. So unless we are able to get, uh, you know, improve our standards of healthy living, we are not able, we would not be able to prevent this transmission. I even say this, yeah, I, you know, I'm also part of, I'm a of, of, of India, and I'm responsible also. The RNTCP program is a very good treatment program, but we have not made a dent in it. We always stated that treat TB and you will control it. And what Dr. Gilladons and Dr. Nagels would have mentioned this morning. Yes, prevention is a form of treatment. I mean, uh, treatment is a form of prevention, but it is not being effective. Unfortunately, the disease is, takes about at least three weeks for bacteriological poisons. And by the time this, uh, after bacteriological poisons, after treatment, three weeks after treatment, I'm still exploding out these organisms. What about pre-treatment? For me to come to see the doctor with cough of two weeks duration, I would have spent about 55 or 70 days. So you see now, uh, if I was a smoker, I would think that the smoking is making me cough. TB, I don't know the existence of TB when I'm smoking. When my cough doesn't disappear or becomes worse, then I come. So these are the multiple ways in which tobacco can impact TB and uh, and poverty. I don't, I'm not saying people um, buy tobacco out of poverty, but they need some form of a center. What do we call it? The word center is there in the brain, which gives them a sense of satisfaction, I suppose. Reward and the price that you pay for that satisfaction. Reward is the price that you pay in the lungs, TV, perhaps even HIV. Experts have answered this uh, question, I think, very naturally. Uh, just to mention by one word, immune system. So if you look at the immune system, it's going to affect people that are going to smoke, going to consume tobacco, all in CDs like tuberculosis diabetes, hypertension, so forth. So uh, I think this, uh, you know, to bring all these together is what we, is the way forward rather than just try to isolate one particular disease and uh, you know, look towards that. So uh, that's my comment on that question. Now, actually, I don't have anything to say. But one thing that uh, the question you wrote uh, is possible, right? I don't think that uh, everything is possible. That is the, the answer is we can eliminate it and, and 
but how we can do that interpretation. So most of the what I have you know, is seen in, in our region, most of the programs, they are almost still particular. And hardly even within the, the program, there, there is very little interaction among the departments. So there are, what is needed at the, at the national level, we need the tools. Policy for non-communicable disease, policy for communicable disease, how to integrate integration, where should be the integration of the national level. So, uh, yeah, I think that is a key question, and it should be integrated in this level. So, uh, as uh, the uh, he, he rightly highlighted, uh, many studies uh, in, in TB and tobacco and shown that the smoker they, they produce the more crop hard. Always, you know, the, the, the coughing is very, very hard and severe. Uh, I think that's one of the, the reasons we see to become the program. Most of the health seeking behavior, the smoker always go uh, to the health center. Uh, almost, it's very late, the late stage. So, uh, there is a longer delay in diagnosis of uh, health seeking uh, uh, the smoker. So, the uh, the already the expert already highlighted smoking as a you know, the, the negative impact in each in each level infection, disease, material you know, after the treatment, the relapse. So we need to really uh, integrate not only the smoking uh, intervention but uh, again others, alcohol, uh, sugar and sugar, you know, all those things should be uh, integrated at least as a health center. You know, when someone visit health center to collect the beliefs. Okay, what is happening now? Most of the setting is only they get the medicine idea, no continue our treatments or don't you know, uh, you medicine. But if we sometimes the health system miss that opportunity because the person is there, we can be uh, offered with a comprehensive health uh, message, uh, not only for TV, but also for smoking. Thank you very much. I think we've already overshot the time, but just to sum up, uh, I think it is important, as our experts have said, uh, that the um, co linkages and coordination between these different sectors and also, I think, moving beyond the health sector. Because when we are talking of social enablers of tuberculosis, HIV, smoking and also, we have to, it's not just a health issue. It is, uh, as uh, Dr. Mathai said, that the, and others have also said, there are so many other factors responsible for it. So, it is just not the health department's uh, uh, oldest and TB and uh, uh, HIV and uh, tobacco control, but of all the departments uh, who are engaged in Changing the health behavior upon so many other factors and to change that to improve the health seeking behavior, I think we all need to work together. Thank you very much, and thanks to all those who were there online. Thank you.